All right. And here we are with podcast number seven with uh, John. Uh, how's it going, John? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, we're fantastic. So uh, good. This is exciting because uh, this is our first uh, podcast with somebody across the pond. We've had a lot of, uh, for our for our stuff, a lot of love from the UK. Uh, so this is exciting for us. Um, but uh, I, I, I need to ask you something right off the hop. Uh, I was talking to Andrew here about this and at the end uh, on your website, at the end, it says peace, love, and bananas. I need to know yep. where the bananas come from. Um, it's, uh, it's actually a Noel Gallagher quote. So, um, yeah, it's sort of like me stealing a little bit of his, uh, genius and, um, <laughs> using it for my, um, my own, uh, benefit, I suppose. So were you a big, uh, Oasis fan? Uh, Dave, had a pretty big influence on me um i've actually got a picture of noel up there on the wall oh, right on um but i don't know whether it um necessarily impacts my music as much as um other bands do but i do certainly appreciate the uh contribution that oasis and that sort of like segment of Britpop um made uh there's mm. been nothing like it since and i think it's um it's a shame i've seen noel many times live and uh there's not many bands that can get a crowd of thousands singing word perfect to chorus and i i admire that i think you know I, people have got opinions about noel gallagher about him ripping off songs and you know and some Crazy. of it's true and is you know maybe his um attitude about things is maybe a bit questionable but um there's not many people that can do that, you know, and I think, you know, Tom Jones can do it and stuff like that, but um, I respect that. And it's sort of like something I like looking up to and think, well, one day I wish I, wish I could do that. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Do that to a crowd, so. I was a huge, huge Oasis fan um, growing up. I, I loved them. Um, heartbroken when they broke up and, and then was entertained for years after the fact, because Liam and everything they did in the media was, was just ridiculous for brothers and, um, the things that you hear about how Liam, what things he said to Noel, it's like it's out of control. It's like a soap opera. Um, it's, it's a show, they're going to regret it one day. That's, yeah, hundred uh, percent. And I hope you know. I, I really hope they regret it sooner than later. You know, yeah. I mean, obviously, right now it doesn't seem like there's any chance of seeing them together again at this point. But you hope that they could maybe pull it together before it is too late, right? I, I, mm. I'm, I'm not, I'm not one of these fans that um, sort of like wants them to return live but i think it's like a, a family thing i think that um you know i think they you know families means everything i know you can get sick of each other but even still you should try and make an effort and but i don't know i, I you don't know what's said to you between these people no it's but, true um, yeah it's true but, uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I saw them in the the last uh, tour that they did at wembley and i something wasn't right i could tell it just wasn't i didn't i, I it was like i wanted to walk out of the gig I just really, didn't, really, yeah, it didn't inspire me at Wembley. Um, but, um, whereas I've seen them live a few times and they were like unstoppable, but, um, yeah, that gig just didn't feel right. And of course, they broke up only a few months later, so right, I, and, I, it felt like it wasn't wasn't working anymore. Yeah, um, uh, uh, well, how many people would, would Wembley fit for a show like that? Oh, uh, I don't know, like 60 to 80,000 yeah, people. What I thought it. it'd, be, it'd be massive. Um, I don't even know if we have anything here in and even ontario where we are in canada but i don't even know if we have anything that big other than maybe a couple uh we have a canadian football like american football essentially we ripped it off and <laughs> yeah and did it yeah. um uh we have stadiums that are you know 30 40 but i don't think we have anything that big not that i know of anyways unless we do festivals and and then they pack them in that way but that's incredible it would also be so, shitty in Canada. Like, like everything we have is built for sports, right? So the yeah. stage wouldn't be able to, you know, unless it goes right around. <laughs> so. We're not built for music, man. We're not. No, we're not. I need to, I need to come out uh, and see Canada. It's like one of the few places I haven't I haven't seen. Well, don't I, uh, don't do it right now. It's yeah. um. Oh well, yeah, the, cold the right now. Yeah, uh, well, you can't, you can't 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 even leave the house no. properly at the moment. So uh, <laughs> no, we're we're in the same boat now. Actually, uh. I, I saw actually on Twitter this morning that I think you said that it was raining right now, like for three days straight. Um, you are. It's it's been it's been four days, five days. I don't know. It's yeah. just been a blur since Monday. It's just <laughs> it's just not. You know, even if you wanted to go out, you 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 know, you'd be mental. You don't want to. Um, but it's um yeah, it's just rained solidly. 
And where and where are you exactly? I'm in the northeast of England in a, uh, it's a little town called Morpeth. It's about 15 miles north of Newcastle. Um, and it's just a really small town that has kept its town centre and um, some really nice little shops, whereas most of the other towns in the country seem to have been um, gutted by um, shopping malls and stuff. So it's got a bit of character. It's very pretty. And the people awesome. are lovely. So um, I, I really like living here. I've lived around different parts of the country and this is definitely one of my favorite places. To favorite be. places. Yeah. I was just saying to Andrew, um, because I, I thought, I, I, I thought you were around, uh, the Newcastle area, but I, uh, we actually have a, a Morpeth area just outside of where we are. We're in London, Ontario, just kind of like the London, England. Um, but actually just maybe 15 minutes away, there's an area that they consider, uh, Morpeth, which it's just so funny that there's, we've talked to two people so far that have similarities from the UK, uh, and here, uh, and it's just, it's incredible to kind of see the connection, you know, being so far away. Um, and, and are, are, you guys, it. are you guys actually like born and brought up in that, that area then? Cause you, your yeah. descendants might have, uh, might have come from around uh, here. Absolutely. Know? My, my, my dad's actually from Fraserburgh, Scotland. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, he was born born there. His whole family's uh, still there. He's the only one that came over. Um, Andrew, are you? Um, I'm first generation Canadian. My my father is actually um, he was born in Portugal, and my mother was born in uh, the U.S. So uh, I don't know how they decided on Canada, but that's that's where I was born. So I'm like first generation, and I'm pretty sure it'll end with me. So that's. <laughs> 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 so yeah. yeah, I don't yeah, speak well, Portuguese, and um, I, I I'm like just the outskirt of the family. I guess my brother and I, we everyone's the Portuguese speaks it. We're just like okay. We barely speak English, so, you know, <laughs> but yeah, that's where we're from. Um, did you, do you, what'd you do in lockdown? Did you record? Are you recording in your house? Um, yeah, I've, uh, this, I'm in my bedroom. This is where uh, everything happens. But um, <laughs> I, I just about finished recording my, um, this album that's coming out in next week, um, just as COVID was hitting. So, um I've literally just spent the whole time since then keeping out of the way in the house because it's not worth going out. Like I know no. they try to open up and stuff like that, but it's just, you can see the consequences of that now with it springing back and being in lockdown again. It's just, for me, I, th I felt like to do my bit would be just to stay indoors. And so I've, I've just been trying to push my music as hard as I can awesome. this whole year from a, from a laptop, but it's, it's difficult because, you know, you, you can't travel to places. You can't, you know, even if I wanted to gig, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Um, some people are doing the the Zoom stuff to try and, you know, do the, like these. You know, I'll play guitar online. Watch me do it. You know, it's you know, fair play to them, but it's it's not my bag. I'm sort of like a bit more of a producer in the sense that it's me, but I'm creating. It's like soundscapes with different instruments. And that's very hard to to replicate. Um, so yeah, I've I've just been pushing my music. I've been trying to start album two as well, which is um, I've got two done, almost done, and I've got one that I'm working on at the moment, which is a pain. To put it, <laughs> like, it's a real it's a real pain. I can't I can't um, everything's where it should be, but it doesn't fit. And it's funny yeah. we've had a couple of those along the way. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. I know one yeah. that kind of we're we're getting towards the end of pushing out. So with with high because high vibrations, right? That's coming out uh, this uh, coming Friday, correct? Yep. And uh, are you, do you play all the instruments on there then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the I didn't have a bass guitar, um, so that's all drawn in with a mouse. One of these. Uh, oh wow! Little things. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that took a lot of work. Um, but yeah, everything's me on the on the um, record. There's there's a few loops. I had to use loops because, like for instance, I can't play a sarod or sarud or whatever you call it, the Indian instrument. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, which you, oh, you haven't heard it yet? I haven't, no. I haven't sent you my album, have I? Oh, sorry, guys. No. Um, That's okay. <laughs> no, I well, probably you should have done that. Um, it's all good. But um, yeah, so I, I I had to cheat a little bit, and I didn't know anyone on the internet at this point when I was making my music I literally just stayed in my room um failing until I got to the stage where it sounded okay and then I thought right I've got to push this 
and I discovered there's a whole music community online and I thought oh, I could have I could have collaborated with people but um yeah it's all me it's all me so awesome. um, but I, I I'm, I'm proud of it I think I think it could have if I had better equipment like this this mic you can see just in shot here yeah if I had stuff like that when I was recording it instead of the rubbish I was using it would have sounded better but you know it is what it is isn't it i you don't know where things are going to go, do you? So, but I'm no, proud of it. I'm proud of it. I, I mean, it, it, and it's funny you say that because I have a, a friend of mine who is also uh, recording, and it, it's funny. You, I think with Andrew and I, we just kind of recorded with what we had, kind of what you did as well, and then we slowly starting to upgrade certain things as you go. But at the same time, I think it makes our music, you know, it's it just shows the progression of it anyways, right? And you want to get it out, but uh, yeah, we're in the same boat. We we can't go out. Uh, we haven't, we've never actually jammed together in the same room. Um, All right. So you've, you've just done it online then. The we thing, just said yeah. the whole thing. We live, I mean, we, we live maybe what, 10 minutes away from each other, 15 yeah. minutes away from each other, but yeah. we're in the same boat. We've been in lockdown since last March, you know, we opened up a little bit, but never really had a chance to, you know, get together to be able to do anything. And by the time we kind of got the ball rolling, like with you in terms of actually deciding, Hey, you know what, maybe we should get an album and start working together on this music and putting it together. Uh, we were right back to where we started in March. So yeah, yeah we're in the same boat where we don't have a drummer. Um, we have a cello in our songs, but we don't, we can't play cello. No, so all we kinds of things. Like you. <laughs> yeah, all kinds of plugins we use. It was fun because um, I would never wrote a song other than, you know, on guitar or on bass. And with all the plug-in options you have at your disposal, like I could start songs on keys. I started songs on just cello and stuff like just random instruments that you get inspired by just a couple of key sounds in that instrument. And then a whole song was built after that. Um, and it's, yeah, it's so interesting. So, so crazy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel guilty about it. It's um... no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, it's just, it's just, at, we're at that point where it's, it's kind of tough because we're just, we can't promote ourselves outside of Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we can't network with anybody. We can't really make a name for ourselves as any sort of live band, um, when we haven't even like jammed the same room. Right. <laughs> so it's all just like, get on the internet, you know, talk to other bands. Um, uh, hopefully people care. Um, this, this, is good, to... this is good what you're doing like, um, and, and that's kind of why we started it John yeah for we can't do gigs right neither can you uh, it, yeah, to me well, this is like going over to the UK and playing a gig right now is being able to talk to you because it's what we would do you know right before a gig or have a few pints after the gig whatever it may be right and kind of connect so yeah it's really nice to be able to have other people on and, and especially like yourself right well what, what, what irritates me about um, the I call, I call it like a mass, like the establishment is, um, you know, the TV, the radio, and it's across the the globe, really. Um, it's probably better in this country because we do have some roots into a national forum like the BBC, but they haven't done enough. Um, you've got people like Adele, and I always mention Adele, but it's, you know, these people have got multi-millions worth of pounds in the bank. Right. And they're still getting their music played on the radio and on TV. Um, and for them, it's exactly the same as if the, you know, just without a tour. Right. right. Whereas, whereas we would have had opportunities to go and do things and try and get out there, but our lives are on hold and they have been for a year. We can't do anything with the music and we're getting basically held back. Um, and there's still this expe expectation that you should have an audience, you know, to, to, to be able to get these things. And I just think that's a little bit unfair when, you know, we, we, we've got to stay indoors. You know, I, I, there's only so far that you can get armed with a laptop. It's true. And, yeah. um, you know, but that's, that's only a small segment of that's, that's the bit we're getting. There's the whole other aspect of um, stadiums and pubs and stuff like that, that would have had live performances not being supported as well. So I'm, I am, worried about the arts i'm i'm really worried about it because um even now people still think that you know oh this is going to end in a few weeks because we're getting the vaccination <laughs> and i it's not we've got no. another year we've got another year of this at least yeah, at um, least i i don't know if it, what it's like for you guys but for vaccinations here vaccinations here in ontario we were supposedly given i think two hundred fifty thousand vaccinations um 
but I think we only like 50,000 have been actually administered. And that was right at the beginning of January. So at this yeah. rate, uh, good luck. <laughs> well, yeah, we have, we have none. We have no, no <laughs> shots at all. So it's, yeah. It's, yeah. I think our, our government's bless him, Boris. All right. He's a bit of a buffoon, yeah. but um, he's um, the vaccinations I think have been rolling out pretty smoothly. I think they've been on the ball with that one, but it's like my mom, she's getting vaccinated on um, Monday. Um, but then there's a three month gap. So right. you've got that gap and then you need another month to be immune, which is like May, June before yeah. she's immune from the, when's when's my vaccination this is going to be yeah. right into the end of the year yeah. exactly and then, and then you've got the issue of um these mutations and stuff like that and it's just like this isn't gonna end no, <laughs> it but, seems that way doesn't it but you know this it is what it is I'm, it is and i mean you know what like with you creating you know your album same with us creating our album if it wasn't for covid i don't know had we actually done what we've done so far um, we wouldn't actually have this, you know, we would never have this podcast either. Right. Yeah. So there's some yeah. things that have come out of it that you've got to rework and you got to rethink. And, uh, you know, hopefully at the end of the day, we all, uh, come out of this better, you know, in, in some sort of way, you got to look at the bright side of everything, right. In some way, but it's tough at times. It's tough. It's a bit of grind. I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not counting the years that are passing. So when I come out of this, I'm still going to be 34 years old. Yeah, exactly. Gonna, yeah. Like when, it, you know, even right. if I'm like, even if I'm like 50, I'm still going to be like 34. But I'm, I just, I just yeah. don't think these years count at the moment. So. No, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're, we're frozen. We're yeah. frozen in time. Um, yeah. John, you mentioned something that um, resonates with me because you said that the pressure, even though we can't play shows and we can't really get, get any interest in the band because we're not out there, um, but the expectation is to still be, you know, have numbers, have people following you. Um, we saw that when we were um, we were entering a contest. We're trying to enter a contest for like indie album of a year, or there was different categories like best single and best independent artist, whatever. And part of the criteria to enter was I think you need to have like ten thousand um, followers. And was it ten thousand? I think it was around ten thousand. Yeah. yeah, and to even so, get in. They even get in. So at that point, and you know what? This is a direct shot at Jim Beam because it was Jim Beam, which I love Jim Beam. But they <laughs> they were it was their contest. And the criteria, the first thing was you needed 10,000 followers. So at that point, they're saying, you know, it's not about the music. It's about the people that are following you. Right? Yeah, which and, is that, half of them are going to be fake. You know, yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. exactly. Like, you, you, can, you can buy the numbers if you want to. It's all it's what I call tits and teeth. It's all show, isn't it? It's not. Um, <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> it's not. Um, it's not. It's not what's important. Exactly. But, um, yeah. So know. that drove me nuts because it's like to me they were saying if you have ten thousand followers, we can advertise our product to those ten thousand followers and let you in the contest. Um, right. And it, it drove me mental. And so yeah. you saying that was really like we've experienced that exact thing where we can't get you know a hundred people right now to care. They want ten thousand, right? So, yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, well, I don't know. It's, it's, it's always a numbers game. And it is. I, I think the system's getting lazy because they don't want to develop anyone and take them on board and take them onto their, you, you know, their wing and do these things. They want you to have done it all yourself, which I can, I can understand that to a certain extent. But, you know, people like David Bowie would not be would not make it these days. And that's the reality of it. There's um, right, right. just is what it is, but I, I yeah. just think there's, there should have been a bit more consideration for the arts all yes. around by everyone. But saying that there are some real like uh, legendary people out there that have, that I've, I've come across on, on Twitter and they've, you know, they've done a really, really stellar job with the small pockets of power that they have. Um, and I'm thankful for that. Even you guys doing something like this is in, is important because, um, you know, it's it's connecting. It's connecting it's connected. exactly. And, you know, once this is on the internet, it'll be up there forever. So right, exactly. yeah, which is crazy to think. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Well, going now, going back to just your music. How did you? Uh, when did you start playing? When did you get into music, John? Um, I started playing guitar when I was about 15, but um, I didn't actually do anything with it for um, for years until about three years ago when um, I heard uh, Grimes' album Visions and she'd recorded all of that on GarageBand and I was like, well, you know, what's this? 
<laughs> so um i uh I basically downloaded Logic because I knew it was the best version of it. And um, I spent three years recording and failing and trying to learn how to improve um, the sound and trying to get it as professional as what I could. And I started off sounding like, you know, the bands you listen to. But um, after a while, something clicked and I, I think I developed my sound, which is uh, it's a a hodgepodge of different bands that you listen to it's not copying one band if that makes sense right yeah. no it's a it's a collective no. right of, of different is that where the yeah. collective part came in actually if you're named uh, I say that? no uh i could you can use I, that if you want now but yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> no, well, yeah um there's a there's an actor called john mickey who's been in um holby city and coronation street in this country i don't know if you get coronation street over we do so, actually yeah, yeah. So, yeah we we have a, so you have the bbc we have the cbc we can okay we just change it a little bit everything yeah, we're just copying everything you we just do. copy everything yeah. i mean yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah so um I, could, I couldn't use his name because he's already he's already nicked it so um i, I didn't want to be i didn't know what to call myself so i basically handed it over to my mate and he said you should be called this and it's i sort of thought well if if i ever do get you know anywhere with this um i'm gonna need some musicians behind me and they can be the collective so i like that right on yeah, yeah that's awesome yeah. that's a really that's a, that's good yeah i just interested yeah it's it's but then when you see the collection you know of, of of all the artists that you've been inspired by so uh would you say that you're more like psychedelic rock like when i listen to you there you know in that or um it's tough because I I hear a bunch. I guess when you said that, you hear a bunch of stuff in your music. You know, stuff. Yeah. You, what, what, what do you think it is? Because uh, on uh, when, when I heard it, it reminded me of like seventies rock. Um, mm -hmm. and your vocal. I was telling Nate actually, the effect on your vocal remind me of the Strokes. Um, Keep well. That's funny you say that because um, I'm using the same sort of technique on some of the songs. That, uh, <laughs> there you go. There, there and that's you go. what it me of. I was first thing I thought of was man, like that's a, like the Strokes kind of like um, it kind of sound like it's like a rawness in the vocal, and that's what the Strokes were like. The vocal was always kind of raw, um, and that's what it reminded me of, man. So it was like a mix of that. Um, yeah, a little, a little. I got a sense of Beatles in there too. Um, yeah, I got the Beatles yeah. there for yeah. sure. Yeah. So that was but my mix. Um, the the the. The vocal sound predominantly emanates from the fact I've had a rubber a rubbish microphone for so long, <laughs> and um, <laughs> like it's, oh, it's a terrible piece of junk. I don't know how I've recorded an album <laughs> with it. Um, so uh, I started singing through a um, amplifier plugin on Logic, and um, oh, wow. which is the same thing as what the Julian, what's his name from? Um, strokes uses sort of like to get that grit yeah, yeah um and um yeah that's that's sort of like mixed in i'm definitely a massive beatles fan um i think that they were the one band that said that any genre is up for grabs and you get that more with more so with like the white album but um i am taking little bits of sounds that i like from different bands that and sort of like nicking them a little bit, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, so you can definitely hear it. Yeah. So, like, for instance, in Wish You Were Dead, there's a like an arpeggiator type thing, arpeggio, whatever it's called, on yeah. the, the bass. And I've nicked that from um, from Queen. Um, oh, right so, because they use it in uh, Radio Gaga. And I thought that's an interesting sound. And I thought no one's used that since, or I, I, they probably have, but I don't know anyone who has. Right. Um, so, um, I just thought, right, I'm going to build a song and fit that in and try and get that in somewhere. So, um, yeah, it's, awesome. it's just, my I think my sound is probably psychedelic. Um, I definitely do play on sounds a lot. Um, but that's what makes makes it interesting, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What, what other uh, musical influences do you have other than, obviously, the Beatles? Do you have Oasis there? Uh, Grimes is a massive one, Grimes, actually. Yeah. Grimes, um, fellow Canadian. Um, yep. she's, um, she's, she's the one that made me want to start doing music. Um, but the chemical brothers, um, oh yeah, I've really quite broad taste in music. So even things like from punk to the sex pistols all the way to, um, really avant-garde stuff, uh, to classical music as well. I've got, a, I'll give anything a go apart from, um, 
manufactured pop music because it's just terrible. It there's is. no, there's absolutely <laughs> no talent there. And no. um, I don't believe anyone listens to it. I know it's made for kids, but I don't even believe they listen to it. I think, um, I think I it's think, just played. That's the yeah, problem. It's just played yeah. everywhere. No, right? I think, they, well, they've got, I think it's that. And I think the record labels are just paying loads of bots in Korea or somewhere to sort of play Justin <laughs> Bieber all day long. Yeah. So I, I, feel, I feel very sorry for the people that, um, have to work in these places to put the numbers on um it's yeah. not good music and you know it is exactly because they're it's being forced down people's throats but the you know the major record labels they do own the the radio stations so right. they they get to pump whatever they want down people's you know stereos and yeah. um yeah so that's the only thing i won't listen to <laughs> I, 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 yeah, even even Dua Lipa, you know, I won't listen to, even though I can see that there's some some talent in the production there because it's not her. It's right. Just, it, it's not real. It's sad because, like, when I remember when my dad, when I was growing up and my dad would be playing the Rolling Stones or whatever, um, and I was I was playing, like, Oasis and stuff, and he was always like, man, like, like, you're, like my music's going to be gone, is what he was always telling me, like, pushing the old stuff on me, right? And then... Um, now I think about like like this generation and what they're gonna like show their kids from this era. It's can't and, be. It's yeah, can't right. Be that's that. what they're gonna get, right? And it's kind of like, what's gonna happen? What's like next thirty years look like? If yeah, you know, God help us all. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it like for, uh, in the UK? At least here for us, it's top forty that's pushed down our throats for the most part. Uh, We've got a couple rock station that we have one in London FM ninety six uh, that plays rock music. It's still you know, your most popular stuff, they're forced to play Canadian, um, which is nice. I'm a huge Canadian supporter uh, of music. Um, and there's so much talent here, but I mean, enough of it doesn't still get heard, especially on the radio, but what is it like in the UK? Um, music's basically devoid on the TV. There's nothing, um, apart from the Glastonbury festival, they have Jules Holland, which predominantly is like New Year's Eve but there's like no music on the TV now that I'm aware of. They mm -hmm. have, they have these music channels that, you know, I never go on. So no. God knows what they're playing on there. <laughs> um, but um, the radio, I think there's a lot of nice independent stations that are trying to do their bit. How much of a listener base they've got, I do not know, but um, we have like different radio stations. Radio one is just Justin Bieber and all that nonsense. Um, Radio 2 is the older stuff but I think that is probably our age group of music as well now because um, from like the 90s the stuff that we yeah. grew up with is sort of like shifting into that age bracket of Radio 2 um, and I think Radio 6 is probably the only like national station that is um, probably giving a, a wider variety of music but um, I think things are shifting online I, I was a teacher for quite a few years and as far as I was aware, the kids weren't listening to anything that was modern. They were going back and listening to the stuff their parents had grown up listening to. Um, and also discovering bands like Fleetwood Mac. Right. So how, how great was that viral video to bring that back onto the charts? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just um <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm I, I don't believe the you know, this modern music is being listened to. I really I I I don't want to believe it. <laughs> maybe maybe it is being listened to, but um, I don't want to live in that world. Um, but it's, when I was a teacher, I, I, the kids were listening to the older stuff, and they were re, they were revisiting it, and I I found that encouraging. So maybe maybe in about fifteen years' time, there'll be something you know glorious from it all but we'll have to see yeah i think it all depends on what you listen at home to with your kids like i have a couple i have two kids at home and uh you know they we have quite the eclectic mix of music here from old to new uh you know most of it is in a, a more rock genre you know but uh they they know the beatles all the way up to you know some of my favorites and i mean it's come to them the canadian artists the arkells and uh, sam roberts band and matt mays and adam baldwin and uh, a lot of Canadian stuff, but they're well versed in music. Um, but they, they, I mean, they also, you know, they know their pop songs, you know, that's from school, their dance party mixes that they have, you know, when they do their, 
uh, just dance stuff. Right. I mean, that's, yeah. and that's where they get exposed to it. Right. Whereas it really wouldn't be on in this household necessarily, but um it's out there so yeah TikTok, it's interesting tiktok's a big TikTok's problem with a big that. one yeah TikTok's big a big problem, problem. With that. yeah yeah, yeah I've, I've not used tiktok yet um, yeah, we we tried but yeah. <laughs> we yeah, should probably give it up yeah it's, it's, it's not it's, it's not our age group is it well, I, no. I just think like, you know, not at all uh, t- twitter's fine for me i'm quite happy yeah. doing that i'm quite happy with youtube but um yeah and yeah. this now that I've done this, I'm gonna yes. with this now. So yeah, this yeah. is nice. This is nice. <laughs> I must give a big shout out to Twitter because I mean that's where I I contacted you, uh, John. I wouldn't have found you otherwise. And uh, I I really we've been kind of the last couple of podcasts we've been really harping on a couple of people like you need to get out there on there because it is a great family for music for independent artists. It is fan- and there's some great great music. And like you said, the one thing was independent radio that has really supported us. <laughs> Uh, in the US and in the UK, especially. Um, if it wasn't for that, I don't know. Well, there's nowhere yeah. else. Like, no. if, you go, if you go online, you've got a segment of musicians on uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram, but they it's a different environment on there um, because it's like more photo and group based, whereas on Twitter, it's, it's a free for all. And I think that's, that's one of the things that makes it so good is that you can talk to anyone if you want to, if you want to talk to, you can even get the attention of someone who's really famous if you, if you're yeah. sharp enough. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So there's, I think there's a lot more power for musicians on, on Twitter. Um, it's the only platform I, I concentrate on because it's, it's the, it's the most instant impact. And I really enjoy it as well. There's some pretty great people on there. There are, there are yeah. absolutely there are. Yeah. I've met, I've, you know, I say met and I, I, now I have, right. I mean, through this podcast, which is, it's just so neat to be able to meet people this way. And like I said, if it wasn't for COVID, I don't know if we'd ever gone down this route, but uh, it, you're right. There are some fantastic people out there and some f- great people that want to support you too. Right. And, and, mm. and, and support each other. Um, I mean, I would certainly not have ever probably heard your music. Right. Uh, if I wasn't on Twitter, uh, and, and Andrew, same thing. Right. So I do think the, um, I do think the, uh, music industry will have to eventually wake up and smell the coffee and, um, have a look on Twitter, at least, at least check their notifications because that is where everything is happening and it's where it's going to be for like another year. And mm-hmm. yeah. what I like, what I like about the, what's happening on Twitter is we've actually developed really strong or developing increasingly strong roots and ties with each other, which is, um, that's not going to end overnight. So when things do get back to normal, you know, we, we all know each other now. It's exactly. true. So, yeah. you know, if, you know, if, if you need someone to play guitar, you know, you can get in contact with someone in, you know, wherever, and they can uh, help you out, you know, and or master your songs. I think that's uh, incredible. Whereas I didn't know these people beforehand. No. So, um, those you know those they're, they're real friendships now it's true and I, and I feel twitter is more um more legitimate i feel like people on twitter if they're checking you out they care um i think like other platforms like instagram or or facebook or whatever it's more of a scroll and like like game it doesn't really people aren't interested in just what you're saying just like they'll just like your picture and move on right um which are all it's adverts like, they're not really they're not really yeah, photos they're all yeah, adverts true. now yeah. <laughs> so you just just yeah, just scroll them for adverts. And it's yeah. like, well, why would you want to do that to yourself? It's but, like sponsored um, by, sponsored by, sponsored by. Yeah. Every, yeah, it's really, yeah, that's what's becoming more. It's becoming more just like, um, which is sad, but Twitter still has that authenticity, you know? Like people care um, and will, you know, share stuff and actually, you know, care to make that connection, um, which is still nice to see because nothing else is like that, right? So what what you guys got next coming out? You got your album coming out, of you? or? Uh, uh... Yeah, we... Um... Uh, we, we have a, we have an EP out right now, the stories of others, part one. So we are in the process of actually releasing a, a second single for our sec, essentially part two. And then, uh, probably later on in March, uh, hopefully we'll have the full album out, which will kind of have uh, three or four bonus tracks, which is trying to solidify the details. So, uh, yeah. we're really looking forward, you know, to that, but it, it's, it's been, a, it's been a wild ride because I mean, uh, we weren't sure how we wanted to do it and how we wanted to break it out. But it, it, for your album, high vibrations, is it, it's a full album. How many songs do you have on there? 14, 14, 14 but, um, That's, yeah. nine, nine instrumentals, no, not nine, nine songs, four, in, four, five instrumentals. So, okay. um, um, 
yeah so nine songs with words on with lyrics with lyrics um yeah yes yeah, it, it's a cohesive piece of cohesive piece of work i think that you need to listen to it from start to finish to possibly get get what's going on in it whereas when you get snippets individual songs i think maybe you're not getting the some people won't get what's going on on the record if that makes sense it's a full story yeah it's right? a bit like yeah. if you listen to dark side of the moon and only get the you know the first part you, right. you know that's that's just noise so um yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, it's funny because I we originally thought that our whole album needed it was almost a kind of a need to be continuous, but then we thought about it more, and that's why we kind of named it the stories of others because each song is essentially a story from someone else. It really wasn't our story; it was our interpretation, maybe, of that story uh, that we'd heard or seen or you know whatnot. And then when we kind of broke it down into EPs, we were like, actually, we can make these into kind of chapters and kind of plays on the one song chapter two that we have and and whatnot so it, it's kind of neat how we've been able to break it out after all but i think once you hear the you know once we do eventually release the entire album as a whole it's kind of the same idea that we've put everything in an order that you know it has a good feel for it and like you said listening to and i mean i feel like when i mean we're all in the same age bracket that albums that i used to listen to uh you wanted to listen to them as a whole, not just as a yeah, single yeah. here and there, but it seems a lot. And I mean, this has been said on Twitter and that singles are kind of the, what people want. They just want these ones. Right. It's, uh, it's, yeah. But I, 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 do, do people want it? Do you I, know, right, just, it's just true. You know, just, just cause everyone else is doing it. Doesn't mean it's doesn't right. Mean it's, it's right. um, yeah. You know, it's, it's this fast food now on a playlist culture and it's, it's like, well, one. um, you know, albums are albums it's what it's a, it's a piece of art you know when you talk about what lasts the, the test of time it's you have got individual singles but it's you talk about sergeant peppers you talk about rumors by fleetwood mac and um i don't want to be down that route of just singles all the time no. you know I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll do them but um you know i, I think <clears> there <throat> should be b-sides with them so, Absolutely. Um, yeah yeah it says there's less than a minute left. Yeah, we are. We're rapid. This is it. Uh, I can't so, believe we're at, this, is, this has been great. Yeah, this is your this is your chance before we log off to just say, uh, you know, what's your Twitter handle find you? and yeah. your website and all Where that. Where can everyone find you? Yeah. Um, on Twitter at John Mickey Music. Uh, so that's John M-I-C-H-I-E Music. Just, yeah, find me there. Okay. And um, Or you can come around to my house. Bring some. Um, there you go. <laughs> bring some alcohol with you. you yeah, know, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you in. But, um, <laughs> Cheers. I could do that. Yeah. All, All right. right well, well, thank I really you so much, John, and uh, we'll be in touch. And uh, thanks so much for her, uh, coming on to our podcast too. Yeah. No. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to 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 speak with you. That's really kind of you. No problem. And hopefully we can do this again. Uh, and sure. good luck with uh, good luck with your album, High Vibrations. Can't wait to hear it. I'll send you a copy after Love it. after this. So fantastic. You, you Perfect. Have, uh, Awesome. Can, um, Thank you, John. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Right. We'll chat All soon. Right. See you later. All Bye. Right. Bye. Bye.